Hi there, my name is Emil Anton and I'm the founder of Alux.com and today we're in Milan. Milan is the fashion capital of the world. I believe that everyone should visit Milan at least once in their lives because frankly, you'll never look at another city the same way after you visited Milan. And though, they make a pretty decent cup of coffee. Buongiorno. One thing to remember when in Italy is that locals drink their coffee standing up by the bar. If you're outside on the terrace, that's a clear sign you're a tourist and be prepared to pay extra. Now that we had our coffee, it's time to start exploring this incredible city. And what better place to start with than with the Duomo itself? So what exactly are the best ways to enjoy the Duomo? Well, you can look at it from the outside, you can explore it from the inside, you can sit on top of it, or you can stand here and touch this leg. You know, for good luck. Jokes aside, this building took nearly 600 years to complete, and even today, it's a little bit under construction. It's the type of thing you did back in the day to impress the Germans and the Austrians. It's the building with the most statues in the world right now. Once inside, make sure you walk all around the Duomo and enjoy the stained glass depicting biblical scenes. Fun to see and hard to miss are the incredibly huge harmonica and the replica of the golden statue called Madonnina that sits on top of the Duomo. On your list should also be the most famous statue in the cathedral, the one of Saint Bartholomew, holding his skin on his shoulders like a stole. Once you're on top of the Duomo, you get to enjoy the skyline of this incredible city and also you get to peek at the little people walking in front of it, just to give you a sense of the scale of the thing. If you want to help with the rehabilitation of the place and have deep enough pockets to donate at least 100,000 euros, you get to adopt one of the statues on top of it and in exchange you get your name engraved at the bottom of it. Throughout the years, Various artists knock statues that don't belong there, try to spot as many as possible, like the boxers, the tennis rackets and a couple more that we cannot show in this video because we still want it monetized. All that walking up and down the Domo got us hungry for a snack. But where do you snack in Milan? There's Panzerotti from Luini, pizza from Spontini, and a bunch of other places that you get to enjoy. But in the name of all that is heavenly, please do not go to McDonald's. Am I the only one getting mad Game of Thrones vibes off of this? With that out of the way, it's time to move to our second location. Unfortunately, we don't have to move very far because we're gonna visit the Galleria. Galleria Vittorio Emanuel II is literally the first shopping mall in the world. Today, it houses all the luxury brands. You got Prada, you got Versace, and all of them are here, making it one of the most expensive pieces of real estate in the world. To be in the Galleria, the brands need to follow strict rules. For example, their logos need to be gold on black so they don't ruin the aesthetics of the place. That combined with the marble floors and the attention to detail makes this one of the most important pieces of architecture in the world. The Galleria is the central meeting point, so don't panic when you see it filled with tourists. Unlike the Duomo, it only took 12 years to complete and the result is to die for. At least, the architect did. On the marble floor, right by each exit, you'll find four mosaics depicting the main cities of Italy. The wolf is Rome, the lily is Florence, the bull symbolizes Turin, and the red flag with the white cross is the representation of Milan. Speaking of the bull, 
they say that if you walk up to it, place your heel on its testes and rotate three times, you get a year filled with good luck. So you might want to give that a shot. A trip to Milan is never complete without visiting one of the most famous opera houses in the world, La Scala. I'm currently in the Scala Opera House, a must-see when in Milan. The acoustics of this place are incredible and it definitely deserves a visit. The place was bombed to ruins in the Second World War, but only three years later, it was rebuilt. It's in booths like these, where the Milanese elite came to gather, not to enjoy the opera, but to spend private time with their mistresses or gamble away. The museum is also included in the price. It's filled with dope things like this tiny Mozart. Even if you're not that much into the opera, names like Verdi, Puccini, Paganini should ring a bell to you. Well, this is the place where they grew their fame. You can't leave Milan without enjoying a gourmet Italian dish. That's why today we're going to the best of the best, Savini in the Galleria. The prices are astronomically high, but the location is worth it. And believe it or not, the food tastes amazing. For starters, I went with the octopus cooked at low temperature, caramelized watermelon, lemon zest, smoked lemon cream and Tajasca olives. By far one of the best tasting octopuses I've had in my life. And the Parma ham aged for 18 months with a pan brioche and sherry compote. You gotta try this. When in Italy, you gotta try the pasta. We went with the macaroni fresh pasta with basil pesto, tomato leaves and founded spring onion. And when in Milan, you gotta try the Milanese risotto. For the main course, we went with duck breast with cherry compote, fondant shallots and potatoes. The duck definitely lives up to the hype. And fish on a bed of mixed vegetables with white sauce. For dessert, we went with the raspberry muse, which was really good. But the real showstopper was the flambe orange crepe Suzette. Something everybody seems to notice when coming at Savini is that the waiters are very rude. The fun thing is, once they realized we're from Alax that our dinner will be recorded and posted on our channel, they immediately replaced our arrogant waiter with a manager who looked sharp and was a lot friendlier. They went all in on the scrapes. They put up a show and everything in order to make sure we have the best experience possible. All in all, we had a great time at Savini. The staff got to know us, we got to know the staff, and Chef Giovanni Bon did a phenomenal job. The food was exquisite. Thank you for watching this special edition of ALUX Traveling the World. I hope you enjoy this experiment type of video we did right here. Let us know what you thought in the comments and please be kind. If you liked it, we'll do a few more. Click there to subscribe, click here to watch another video, and don't forget. An a -like video is never over without a special treat for those of you watching till the end. So check out this alpaca guy.